many times in their over enthusiasm neophyte spiritualists who have just begun the path they start proclaiming <laughs> i am the soul i am not the body so so now forget about the body <laughs> many people they neglect their eating they neglect taking care of the body why well, i am the soul i am not the body that's all right but this body is the vehicle for the soul if you don't take care of your body then you will not even be able to do bhakti because right now you are in the materially conditioned state right now your situation is such that if the body is in pain then even the world seems detestable to you if the wife asks the husband how much do you love me the husband says don't speak to me right now i've got a headache you see when he's got a pain in the body then he doesn't like the wife also wife says what's wrong with you just answer the simple question so why are you eating my head i've told you i'm having a headache so towards god we've got such little love if the body gives us pain how will we be able to remember him so in our situation right now we must protect the body that is why shri krishna has warned natyashnatastu yogosti na jaikanta manashnatah na chati swapna shilasya jagrato naiva charjuna 16th verse of the 6th chapter of the gita he says arjun if you totally stop sleeping you cannot do yog if you sleep too much you cannot do yog if you give up eating you cannot be a yogi if you eat too much you cannot be a yogi you have to do everything in moderation for maintaining your body you have to give it the proteins the vitamins that are necessary so he says yuktahar viharasya yukta cheshtasya karmasu yukta swapnav bodhasya yogo bhavati dukkha kripalu ji maharaj when he was young before he became jagat guru people used to call him paramahansa ji so once he was in vrindavan one boy came from agra all agog with the desire to realize shri krishna he reached vrindavan he gave up eating and drinking and without eating drinking he just sat there in 22 days he gave up his body that's how much how many days he would last without eating drinking now the news spread in vrindavan that this boy this kranti kali kari balak this revolutionary kid he did so such tremendous austerities to realize god so some of the mahatmas the saints of vrindavan they decided to have an assembly so an assembly was called of the well known saints of vrindavan at that time kripalu ji maharaj was also invited he was in his late 20s so the question for debate in that assembly was that this act by that boy was it correct or not and what is the reward he will get so everybody was praising him oh so amazing what a wonderful feat kripalu ji maharaj was just sitting quiet then they asked him that what is your opinion about it please come and tell us so he said that to desire to meet god intensely is most praiseworthy and his desire to meet god 
was commendable however if god does not give his vision we have no right to finish this human body this is a gift of god and we are expected as our responsibility to him to take care of it to finish it off like this is irresponsibility and that will result in punishment so narad ji is saying the same thing here that bhojanaadi vyaparas twa sharira dharana avadi in order to maintain the body you will need to eat you will need to drink don't neglect these basic things sutra number 15 tal lakshanani vachyante nana mat bhedat now narad ji says what are the symptoms of bhakti you know like what are the symptoms of love आहे सरदो रंगे सरदो चश्मितर इंतजारी बेकरारी बेसपर कम गुफ्तनो कम खुर्दनो ख्याबे हराम आशिकारा नौ निशान इन उर्दू इट इज हेड दिस नाइन सिम्टम्स ऑफ लव ईटिंग लेस स्लीपिंग लेस वॉन्टिंग टू टॉक लेस एंड सो ऑन सो वॉट आर द सिम्टम्स ऑफ डिवाइन लव इन द हार्ट he says nana bat bheda there are different views on this why because bhakti is a vast ocean it is infinite like god is infinite no one saint realizes all the different aspects of bhakti to their completion it is like god each devotee realizes bhakti differently engages in bhakti differently this does not mean that one person's realization is correct and the others is wrong like you have heard that story of the 10 blind men who went to see an elephant one person caught the elephant's tail he said this elephant is just like a rope that is his realization the other put his hand on the elephant's stomach he said the elephant is flat like a wall the third caught his ear he said the elephant is like a fan the fourth cast caught its tusk he said the elephant is as pointed as a spear now if these people start fighting my understanding is right your understanding is wrong then somebody with eyes will come and he will say don't fight you are all right you are all describing the elephant the only thing is you are describing a tiny part of this elephant and all this together makes the entire elephant so, so there have been so many fights in history in the name of religion it is uh how amazing that religions teach love for god and the maximum wars in history have been fought in the name of religion or should we say lack of understanding of what religion is that is what makes people fight in the name of religion my religion is right your religion is wrong so narad ji is saying that this bhakti is of different kinds and different varieties you cannot just classify that this is bhakti each acharya has described bhakti is in his or her own way kripalu ji maharaj describes that you know as a youth as a 16 year old 
he left the world for some time and he disappeared in the forest so he went to chitrakoot which was a dense forest at that time lions and all would roam around now of course there are ashrams roads have been built so he lived there in the jungles so he describes that in a cave once he saw this old mahatma sitting the mahatma ji was thin he had long matted hair and he has had a small piece of broken glass and a comb with many teeth fallen so mahatma ji would comb his hair see that he's dressed all right or whatever make his looks to the best possible then he would look out of the cave as if he was waiting for someone and after quite a few minutes of waiting he would say ha sham sundar then he would look down disappointed then again he would start doing his decoration now seeing this kripalu ji maharaj was astonished that on the one hand this old thin withered mahatma and then he's got this mirror in his hand and comb in his hand and he's combing himself so with great curiosity maharaj ji went and offered his respects and said mahatma ji what are you doing first he was very reticent not willing to reveal when maharaj ji insisted he said beta my son priyatam aate honge my beloved may come any time sham sundar my divine beloved he may come any time if he comes and sees that i am not dressed up properly he may not like it that is why i comb my hair but he doesn't come kripalu ji maharaj thought that what an amazing type of devotion he has got at every moment he is waiting for the arrival of god when will he come when will he come when will he come that love has reached such an intensity but is this devotion described anywhere have the shastras said that you sit in a cave with a broken piece of glass and tooth and keep waiting so nobody can describe the infinite kinds of devotion that are possible similarly the great acharyas have also described devotion in different ways so narad ji says nana mat bhedat there are all different opinions and he doesn't say this is wrong this is wrong he is just presenting you these opinions that this is also right this is also right so he goes on first to give the opinion of ved vyas the great sage ved vyas sutra number 16 puja dishvanurag iti parasharya puja dishvanurag iti parasharya so now he gives first of all the opinion of ved vyas and ved vyas says the symptom the lakshan of bhakti is anurag or attachment to puja the worshiping of the deity form of god regarding deity worship there is a lot of confusion and misunderstanding the deity is revered and worshiped as god and when we do that the deity actually is a piece of stone or wood or sometimes it's a painting it's not god so people ask that if when you are worshiping stone how can you get the divine fruits by worshiping stone how can you get the fruit of worshiping god the reason is that god sees your heart and he is noting you have created divine sentiments 
and with those divine sentiments you are offering your seva you are enhancing your love so god notes your heart and accordingly he gives the divine results swami vivekanand when he came to usa he was asked he said that these indians they have such dull intellects that they worship stone as god imagine you're looking on a piece of stone an idol as god what dullards these indians are but they respected swami vivekanand as being very knowledgeable because when they heard him speak they realized the amount of knowledge he has so the way they would introduce they would say asking swami ji if he can give knowledge is like asking the sun if it can give light and yet they cast this aspersion about the faith that is practiced in hinduism swami ji answered he said my guru ram krishna paramahansa in front of him my knowledge was like a drop in front of the whole ocean that is the reservoir of divine knowledge that my guru ram krishna paramahansa possessed that ram krishna paramahansa used to worship a deity a stone deity of mother kali so if by worshiping that stone deity one can attain the level of ram krishna paramahansa what is the problem with it everybody knows it's a piece of stone but they develop divine sentiments and with those divine sentiments when they worship it god is noting the sentiments and giving the results he's purifying the heart and that is the goal right now to purify the heart symbols have been used in every religion in christianity they use the symbol of the cross there also you have a deity in islam they will face the kaaba and read the namaz there also you have the symbol so here the symbols are so fascinating the image of god himself that is being worshiped it becomes so easy to create divine sentiments and enhance that love you know swami dayanand saraswati of the arya samaj in the 19th century he went around refuting this deity worship there was a reason for that when he was there at that time he had to defend hinduism in the time when the britishers were ruling so there's a historic reason nevertheless there was a king of alwar who was a worship a follower of arya samaj and he would totally refute deity worship so again swami vivekanand when he stayed in his palace they engaged in a discussion and the king of alwar was very annoyed in refuting deity worship strongly so there's a picture of swami dayanand on the wall swami ji lifted that picture threw it on the ground and placed his foot straight on the face of the picture the king was infuriated he said i will beat you up <laughs> swami ji said why how can you do this to my guru he said that is not your guru that is just a picture but look in that picture you have created divine sentiments that is why you are feeling hurt so you also are doing deity worship 